Michael Carroll, this is the house where last night's shooting took place. Law enforcement is calling it a brutal murder. And after searching all night, deputy believes, deputies believe they have found the man who did it. Around 8 p.m. Monday, Hart County deputies were called to this home on Friendship Road. Reports of multiple gunshot victims. Deputies responded wide open. Uh, me and the investigators was coming down the road right behind them. Upon their arrival, officials say one man, Corey Hendrick Alexander, had suffered multiple gunshot wounds and was pronounced dead on scene. Another woman had also been shot once in the leg and stabbed multiple times. The suspect fled the scene and after the crime scene was cleared, the search for the suspect was on. Right away we had no less than 60, maybe 75 law enforcement personnel in the area to, to cord off that mile and a half by mile and a half block. After a 12 hour manhunt, law enforcement found and arrested Lorendrick Tabor in connection to the shooting. Law enforcement says Tabor admitted to carrying out the violent attack the night before. Law enforcement also says that there is a possibility this homicide is connected to the killing of America Scott, the 18 year old whose body was found floating in a pond in Anderson County January 20th. Deputies are currently working to learn more on if the two are linked. It's still sad that uh, young people are killing young people, you know, just for whatever reason. But uh, at least he, he won't be killing anybody else anytime soon. We will continue to update you as more information comes into our newsroom. Live in Hart County, Georgia, Alan Devlin, WYFF News 4. Thanks, Alan. A 7.7 .7 magnitude earthquake hit the Caribbean Sea today. Hit about 80 miles off the coast of Jamaica. No reports of major damage, but some people in Miami felt it and they evacuated buildings as a precaution. And take a look here. Water spilling out of a pool. This is in the Grand Cayman Islands as the quake hit. A woman who lives there in the Grand Cayman sent this video to CNN. A tsunami of less than half a foot was recorded in Georgetown in the Caymans, but the tsunami threat was lifted shortly afterward. A 5.5 magnitude aftershock also registered southeast of the Caymans. Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice joins us. And Chris, you've got more insight into this quake, right? Yeah, we're continuing to see more aftershocks come into the weather center right here. The main one occurred at 210 there, 7.7. .7, but I'm registering multiple strong aftershocks here, up to a 6.5 recorded just about an hour ago. There's the Grand Caymans right there. We're still seeing those aftershocks, as many as one, two, three, four, five, six aftershocks within the past two hours here. Here at home, our weather coming from the west, right now as we're seeing this next storm system take shape. We're seeing a series of these move our way. The next one arrives on Friday. Now this one looks fairly ominous right now with all this moisture coming east, but it's actually going to weaken and dive south, which means we'll get just a piece of this and some scattered showers certainly likely tomorrow. The cloud covers what you'll notice tomorrow and that will keep temperatures much cooler than today. It's 55 in Greenville, 46 in Asheville. Tomorrow we'll be lucky to get out of the 40s in many locations. 12 hour forecast increasing clouds with temperatures falling into the the mid 30s across the area. I'll map out the second system, which promises to bring more rain to our area in just a few minutes. Thank you, Chris. A judge has set bond for a former upstate high school teacher accused of engaging in sexual battery with a student. According to an arrest warrant, it happened on school property during school hours. Our Taggart Houck is in Anderson with more. Tag. Hey, Carol, the judge setting the bond at $25,000 for 48 year old Douglas Brooks. He appeared uh, via closed circuit TV from the Anderson County Detention Center. According to arrest warrants, the sexual battery encounters happened from April 2012 to July 2012. That was when Brooks was a band instructor at Belton Middle School and Belton Honeypath High School. He was also co-band director at the high school. Now back in December, the victim who deputies say was Brooks's student reported the alleged encounters. Brooks's wife was inside the courtroom this afternoon. She says she's worked side by side at school with him for the last eight years and denied he's capable of doing what has been alleged. Anderson district officials say they weren't made uh, aware of any allegations during his time there. Now Brooks has been the band director for the high school in York district one since 2012. He has since been placed on administrative leave. A representative for the district says it was not where aware, excuse me, of the allegations when they hired Brooks. And during that hearing, he chose not to say anything. He'll be back in court here in Anderson, March 6th at 9 a.m. In Anderson, Taggart Houck, WYFF News 4.
Tech, thank you. A judge has denied bond for a man accused of criminal sexual conduct. Clemson police have Quincy Burt of Pendleton in jail. They say the assault was reported two weeks ago on January 14th. He was arrested the next day. Call the Clemson police if you have any information that may help with this investigation. The man suspected in a deadly shooting in Greenville County has been found dead in Ohio. The Greenville County Sheriff's Office says 22-year-old Kyle Greisinger shot and killed his father, Steve, whose body was found Friday at a home on Mendel Drive. Investigators say Kyle Greisinger stole his father's truck and drove to Norwood, Ohio, and that's where Kyle's body was found earlier this morning inside the truck. Police in Ohio say he appears to have died by suicide. The Sheriff's Office says it does not have a motive yet, but says the father and son were living together at the time of the shooting. 30 years in prison. That's the sentence for a man who shot and killed a man in Spartanburg County. The solicitor says 26-year-old Patrick Coggins pleaded guilty to killing 38-year-old Terry Whiteside Jr. in January 2018. It happened at a home on California Avenue. He was arrested shortly after in Polk County, North Carolina. An eviction hearing for an upstate megachurch has been delayed now. The hearing for Relentless Church has been scheduled now for, had been scheduled for Friday. Earlier this month, a lawsuit was filed asking the court for an order to remove Relentless Church from the property owned by Redemption World Outreach. The right lawsuit now. says Relentless Church's month-to-month -month lease was terminated because it wasn't paying its bills and that the church was given 30 days' notice to vacate the property. Court records show Relentless recently hired Bruce Bannister. He is a state representative, and the legislative session is in session right now. He asked for a legislative exemption. A spokeswoman for Relentless did not want to comment. Some upstate hospital staff may be making more money, but certain projects are now paused. Our Renee Wunderlich is live in the studio with us tonight with more on this. Renee? Well, Carol, Prisma Health was planning to replace the old Marshall Pickens Psychiatric Hospital with new... They were, excuse me, planning to replace it, but now new leadership is reviewing projects like this, and that has some of the mental health community concerned. A $34.7 million psychiatric facility, Grove Point, may still be built, but right now it's an empty construction site on Prisma Health's Greenville campus. The decision to delay is disappointing to Greenville's branch of the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Not having adequate psychiatric care puts pressure on other parts of the medical community. So it's going to affect your emergency department because people don't have anywhere to go and that's going to lead to overcrowding in the emergency department. It's going to affect our community as a whole. NAMI provides education and other resources to those in crisis. Prisma Health says the new president and CEO Mark Ohala wanted to pay employees more. A Prisma spokesperson provided WYFF4 with a statement that reads Ohala took quote, immediate action and brought pay up to market competitive levels. Prisma Health statement reads in part, we are in the process of reviewing capital projects, including the psychiatric facility. In the meantime, we continue to take care of our adult behavioral health patients within our existing facility. And again, to be clear, Prisma Health says they will continue to treat those adult patients receiving psychiatric care at Marshall Pickens. The site is where a new cancer facility was planned, and like Grove Point, that project is also currently under review. We're told cancer patients will stay where they are for now. Back to you. Renee, thank you. President Trump's lawyers wrapped up their arguments today, laying out their reasons for acquitting the president. Talk still touching on claims made in a manuscript from former <laughs> National Security Advisor John Bolton's book, which was obtained He's by the New York it. Times. In that manuscript, Bolton claims President Trump told him he withheld aid to no Ukraine for political reasons. The president's defense called that, quote, today. inadmissible and says removing the president from office would lower the bar for impeachment. Future presidents, Democrats, Republicans, will be paralyzed the moment they are elected. Those that are for or against the president overly want the trial to be fair, which means the calling of witnesses. Over the next two days, 16 hours of questioning are set, eight hours for each side. The senator's questions must be in writing and submitted to the Chief Justice, John Roberts. Still to come tonight, memorials showing up across the globe for Kobe Bryant, including here in the upstate. And still to come in sports, a chance the Panthers will be back to Wofford College for training camp coming up. I'm mapping out not one, but two chances for rain over the next couple of days. One will get close to our weekend. I'll show you the dry times in just a few minutes.
The NTSB tonight continues to investigate the helicopter crash that claimed the lives of Kobe Bryant and eight others on Sunday. Authorities say the veteran pilot tried to avoid fog that was so heavy it grounded police choppers. They say the helicopter smashed into a hillside in Calabasas, California at nearly 200 miles per hour. The NTSB says the pilot had tried to climb to avoid a cloud layer. Experts say he may have simply gotten disoriented. That helicopter did not have a black box. It disappeared from radar 37 minutes into the flight. Tributes keep popping up around the world for Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and the seven others who died in that crash. There are tributes here in the upstate. This billboard near the Gateway Project remembers the NBA legend. You'll find it along I-385 at the I-85 interchange in Greenville County. The U.S. Department of Transportation is working to combat human trafficking through 24 public transportation systems across the country. WYFF News 4 investigates found one of those systems is GreenLink in Greenville. Our purpose today is to make a difference, and that's to make the transportation sector a more effective force against the evil that is human trafficking. Because America's roadways, railways, airways, and waterways are being used to facilitate this modern form of slavery. GreenLink will receive more than $20,000 in the form of a federal grant, and it will use that money to create training and educational materials for employees and riders. There will also be a public awareness campaign. GreenLink is one of four agencies in the Carolinas to win some of the grant money. The city of Greensboro is working on an app that will allow transit users to report safety concerns anonymously. And we've broken down the human trafficking cases uh, reported in the state. In 2018, North Carolina had the 10th most reported cases in the country. South Carolina is number 20 on that list, but the number of cases has risen in South Carolina every year since 2012. Still to come, a scam warning from an upstate sheriff's office where the scammers are claiming to be deputies. Temperatures topped out today close to 60 degrees in many locations, running about 5 degrees above normal, but a much cooler day on the way tomorrow. I'll show you how low we go. We are on some breaking news just into us here at WIFF4. Convicted Charleston Church shooter Dylan Roof has appealed his convictions and his death sentence. Dylan Roof was convicted of killing nine church members at Emanuel AME Church in Charleston at a Bible study back in June of 2015. The story is still developing. We'll continue to follow this, bringing you the latest across the platforms of WIFF News 4. Carol. The Greenville County Sheriff's Office is warning of a scam that's going around. The Sheriff's Office tells us scammers are posing as deputies, telling people they miss jury duty and they must pay a fine to avoid getting arrested. Again, this is a scam. The Sheriff's Office reminds folks it will never solicit money over the phone for any reason. Deputies say to hang up and report the scam to the Sheriff's Office. The number to call is 864-467-2000.
5300. Some new start and dismissal times for some Pickens County schools next year. Uh, this is a little complicated, so pay attention closely here. The middle and high schools will start at 830 and run until 315. District officials say that's to separate the bus routes for elementary, middle and high school students. This change will not affect Dacusville Middle School because it's on the same campus as Dacusville Elementary. The district says it will continue to open schools no later than 730 in the morning to accept car rider drop offs. A new superintendent was voted in last night in Lawrence District 55. Dr. Amika Thomas will lead the district starting July 1st. She'll take the place of Dr. Stephen Peters, who is relocating to Georgia. Thomas has been serving as assistant superintendent for teaching and learning in Lawrence 55. She's a product of the district, graduating from Lawrence High School before studying at Winthrop, Columbia College, Furman, and Walden University. Our next system taking shape back toward the west right here. A lot of rain, even some wintry weather on the north side of that in Kansas. This is actually going to dive south and give us a tail end of that system, which means some scattered rain for us, just not a driving heavy rain that will linger all day long. We're clear right now, but the clouds will move in by tomorrow morning. In fact, looking at our SkyCam network around town, a beautiful evening taking shape with 55 reported in Greenville and in Anderson. It's 52 in Spartanburg, now down to 46 in Asheville, getting that extra daylight every Every day brings us another minute or so each evening. 46 degrees right now in Asheville. It's 55 in Anderson, 52 in Pickens. And the overnight hours will fall into the low 30s across the area, fairly close to freezing in Greenville northbound. And Asheville will top out or bottom out, I should say, at 28 tonight, 35 or low in Anderson. For tomorrow, the clouds will be on the increase, and there is a chance for a shower at any given hour, but the best chance will be in the afternoon and evening hours. Not all of us will see rain tomorrow. The chance is overall relatively low, but we'll keep that chance as an upper level system moves overhead. Best chance is going to be in western North Carolina with rain possible tomorrow evening. A rain snow mix as we go into tomorrow night, keeping close eye on that. 50 degrees your high tomorrow in Asheville, so widespread problems not expected with the rain and snow, mainly for the elevations above 3,500 feet. Let me map it out here for you. So clouds increase, but for the most part, we're dry other than a shower or two here or there. The best chance will be into the evening hours in western North Carolina. And there goes your rain and snow, and it's over with. The bulk of this moisture goes south of us tomorrow night going into Thursday morning. At the same time, those winds come out of the northwest in the mountains. I do expect some snow showers through midday on Thursday along the Tennessee, North Carolina line. That tapers off and we have a dry Thursday across the area awaiting our next system, which moves in on Friday. The wind comes around from the south and we'll have rain develop by Friday afternoon. This low pressure system does now look to get closer to us, which means a better chance for rain along and south of 85 through the day on Friday. We'll continue this into Friday night as a strong low pressure system moves just south of our area, giving us rain into Saturday morning. Right now it looks to be a close miss, a near miss with some wintry weather here with that cold air being on the other side of the mountains. I do not see that sinking up, but it's something we'll keep a close eye on here. With it being an arrival time overnight, it's a close call, but temperatures look to fall to about 35 in Asheville, and the bulk of the moisture does look to stay south of our area. So We'll keep a close eye on it there for you. The four day looks like this. Partly cloudy skies turning into cloudy skies tomorrow. High of 50 with rain moving in late in the day. Mostly cloudy skies on Thursday. Rain moves in late on Friday and continues into early on Saturday morning. But really most of the weekend will be dry and quite nice. 53 on Saturday, 60 on Sunday. Look at that. Really can't order up a better day there as we go into the weekend. Even gets warmer than that. Mid 60s by Monday and Tuesday. The mountains see a couple of days of light wintry mix in the morning hours. Then we warm up into early next week. More information now on that breaking news. Charleston church shooter Dylan Roof is appealing his convictions and death sentence. He killed nine church members at Emanuel AME in June of 2015. His lawyers are arguing he was suffering from schizophrenia and other psychological disorders when he acted as his own lawyer during his capital murder trial. He was sentenced to death for the federal hate crime. More on this as we get it here in WIFF News 4.